What's up everybody? Good guy Glenn here. Spooky Jeep. On the way over, I was uh, hoping to capture for y'all what the Jeep is doing today. It's stalling, not getting fuel. Now a lot of you who drive ZJs or older Jeeps with the 4.0 motor, you know that the fuel pump is an issue in these things, but the fuel pump had been done. The fuel filter is not that old. A lot of this started happening when Build Back Better started and gas went through the roof and I would stop putting super in this thing. Now I know a lot of you are going to say that you run regular all day. That's great. But I've always ran super in this rig since I've had it. And coincidentally, when I start running regular, I start having issues. Keeps throwing a code for the fuel pump relay. So that's why today we're at Napa Auto to pick up a new one from auto, picking up relays from AutoZone. And as a lot of you would know, Dorman parts are garbage, especially their relays and their sensors. It's better to go with OEM or a better brand. So I'm gonna see what they have here today. So as you can see on the diagram, the fuel pump relay is this one right here. I don't know why I'm shaking it. Like I could hear if it's bad if I shake it. But we're gonna go in, pop in a new relay, and see if that does anything. Lantern fly. Well, they don't have it here at this Napa, so I'm gonna go up to another Napa. The guy brought up a very good point. If the fuel pump is pumping, which it is, chances are it's not the relay, and it just is bad gas. Another culprit could be, but I mean, I really don't think so. The cam position sensor wire is resting up against the block. That's not good. I checked none of those wires are frayed. I checked and none of those wires are frayed. It's not catching up on the head stud, which oftentimes the wiring harness will, wearing a hole in it, causing it to uh, ground out. So I'm just gonna add some Lucas fuel additive just because, you know, we're running regular lately. And uh, we'll run up to the other Napa. We'll change the relay, even though we probably don't need to. And uh, get it done. So all day, I uh, rode around with the camera, trying to capture when the Jeep loses fuel and stalls. And it wouldn't do it as long as I had the camera rolling. But, but sure enough, the minute I put the camera away and I went and ran some errands, like at the hardware store, it stalled on me again because Napa didn't have the part and I didn't want to drive all the way up to the other Napa. I went to the dreaded auto zone and I bought Dora last. I'm not a fan of putting this junk in my Jeep. It's disposable, especially Dora last. Relays, door last, sensors, they will go bad. They will fail again. I, when I had done the crank position sensor in this Jeep, I did it twice in a matter of a couple of months because the door last sensor was such a piece of garbage. Wound up getting OEM direct from Chrysler and it's been okay. So a matter of fact, just today, I don't know if you could see it. I rerouted that sensor and the wire so it wouldn't be touching the engine block.
there's where it is the one that has no markings on top because it's not no longer a Chrysler OEM relay that's your fuel pump relay so with that being said did that solve our problem I don't know I still feel that we have a bad fuel problem here but I'm not positive if it's just this relay then that would be awesome so what we should probably do is test it out and see okay the moment of truth Still does that. It's the belt squeaking on the AC compressor that's going bad. Let's take this thing for a spin around the block. When I bank these turns, let's see if it stalls. belt drives me crazy. I have the camera on. There's no way it's going to stall with the camera on. Every time I try to document this, it doesn't work. See, I took that turn pretty hard. Then I have a theory that this only happens when the truck gets hot and it's been sitting for the some of this afternoon so it's not even up to operating temperature yet let's bang this turn I don't know if you're a ZJ owner you're not unfamiliar with this Things never are what they think, what you think they are. Common sense goes out the window when it comes to diagnosing things. I got a check engine light on this rig that said fuel pump relay failure. But when I turned it on to accessory mode, you hear the fuel pump kick on. Maybe it was intermittent, maybe it was going bad. Definitely something. But as of right now, it seems like it's okay. Later on, when I fuel this pig up, we'll see. Maybe we'll continue this video into another day just to see if I can get it to fail again. Or maybe I didn't maybe I fixed it if this has ever happened to you or if you have any idea of what you think it is and don't say it's the PCM leave a comment below a lot of times guys they hear that these things have bad PCMs and they right away jump to the it's the PCM and there are times where it's the PCM but I'm telling you I don't think that's what's wrong with this rig at all there's all kinds of issues with the fuel system in this thing uh, if you know anything about these 4.0 motors, the fuel rail, from everything from the fuel rail to the pump to the way the lines are, it wasn't the greatest design. There's a lot of fixes, aftermarket stuff you could do to fix it, especially the fuel rail. The fuel rail dead ends, and uh, a lot of sediment builds up down there, and then you'll lose fuel pressure in that last cylinder that's common the fuel pump common the fuel pump in this rig has been changed uh, I'm not the one who changed it it was changed right before I got this thing I got it like I said I had to rebuild the front end I put uh, put it on a three inch lift 
I put 31, 32, I think 31 inch tires on here. It's my daily, you know what I mean? So this kind of sucks that this happened. I think it's fuel because I really didn't start having this problem till I started putting regular fuel in here. I've ran super most of the time. I've owned this rig, probably the whole time I've owned this rig. I've only put super in it. Those days are over. Super is no longer just 30 cents more than regular. Where I live in New Jersey, it is currently over a dollar more. I don't know why regular came down in price and super stayed right the hell where it was, but that's what's going on. I'm running at an idle because usually all this morning this thing wouldn't run for more than a minute at idle before I lost fuel and it died. It would start to stutter and I could catch it. If I start gunning the gas, it would catch itself. That's why I don't think it's a PCM. PCM would just cut power to the pump and then you would die and that would be it. This stutters and you can save it. You can shift it into neutral while driving it and rev it up and it like backfires and it has a hard time. Plus there's no check engine light. So it's not a knock sensor. For sure, I'm willing to bet there's bad fuel in this truck again, which means where I thought I got bad fuel wasn't the culprit. It was one of my regulars. One of my regular spots that I'm still going to, still giving me bad gas. I don't know, I'm gonna fuel up tomorrow because it's hot today, it's, a, it's 91 degrees and it's already six o'clock. I just wanna take a shower and be done with today. So next scene will be tomorrow, we'll be fueling up and we'll see what happens. I really thought the other day where we left off on this video that everything was gonna be all right. I changed the fuel pump relay, everything was driving fine. I told you that when we stopped for fuel, next we would record and see how it reacted after we got fuel, but we never made it there. Things came up over the weekend. I never got fuel. And this morning I went to the VA. All hell broke loose on the way back. In the morning on the way there, the thing ran like a champ. I thought all our problems were over. It ran better than it had ran in a while. But alas, when I came back out from the VA, once my appointment was over, got in, started driving. Not only did it run rough and stall out, but I couldn't restart the rig. It just was bucking, backfiring, running real rough, wouldn't idle. Definitely a fuel issue. Definitely with the smell that was coming out of the exhaust and the way that it was backfiring and not running. It definitely seemed like bad fuel. But then, alas, after the cops came, because I was in the middle of the road, stranded, and numerous tries to get it started, it started and it ran fine. It missed a few times on the rest of the trip home. It ran and it got me here. And now I'm gonna push my luck, drive this rig up to my job, and I'm gonna put it in the shop in Waldwick. Now I know a lot of you would say, putting it in the shop, whatever, but listen, I'm very mechanically inclined. I've done a lot of work to this thing myself over the years, but I do not have access to a lift right now. I can't drop this tank and empty the fuel, change the fuel filter. I'm not doing it on the ground where I currently live. It's not gonna be a thing. Those days are over. I'm going to take it to shop that works on Jeeps and other off-road vehicles. They're competent and it's right next door to my job. I know them for a long time. They're gonna take the whole thing apart and tell me at least what I'm dealing with. And I'll probably throw another fuel pump in there even though this fuel pump has been done in this truck. But if it was a Dora Last or a Dorman fuel pump, it's probably uh, gone no good because that's what they do. And I know that the guy I'm taking it to will get me an OEM Chrysler part. I'll pay a little bit extra, but I don't care. I cannot 
have this thing stalling on me when I'm crossing major intersections. I can't go on the highway because I'm scared. And I can't go taking it off road because if I get stuck in the middle of the woods, who's coming to get me? We're gonna go on the adventure. If I have the camera on, it won't stall because that's the way that this has been working. Whenever I don't have the camera with me, it gives me all kinds of problems and breaks down. When I got the camera on, it runs like a champ to make me look like an idiot. So we're gonna take the back roads up to my job. It should take me like forever, but we'll see what happens. Well, it's doing it, losing power. Starting to wonder if this is a bad idea driving this thing up there. Might be a better idea to just have Billy from Alpine Towing come get it. Yeah. See what it's doing? It's dead. Straight dead. Throw it neutral. do I don't know what to do if I drive it up there I'll run out more of the gas so it'll be easier for them to drop the tank but I'm pushing my luck drastically doing what I'm doing um, Billy from Alpine Towing is actually located more along the lines of where I'm going as opposed to where I am currently so even if I get halfway to work, it'd be easier for him to come get me. So it might be better to just take the chance. And like I said, I'm taking side roads. So I shouldn't really have a problem. I could pull over if I need to, but it did it. It did it with you guys present. I don't want to admit that it's the fuel pump, seeing that a new fuel pump is in here, but I didn't put this fuel pump in. So I don't know what kind of fuel pump it was, but I could tell you by looking at the wiring harness, I think it's like, I think it's definitely like a door last part, but we'll see. The dream is to be in a position again where I could, uh, have a place where I could work on my stuff again. I'm currently not in that position. All my tools are in storage. I live in a nice house in a decent neighborhood. I don't have a driveway, a real driveway, little two car deal. So fixing this thing where I live, it's not where I came from, where you can fix your stuff in the street and they didn't even really care if you were a townie or whatever. It's a different world. But yeah, I know a lot of people have told me on the ZJ group that it's my PCM or whatever. I'm hoping it's not my PCM. I'll tell you one thing that's scary is I noticed, like so I said today, when I was driving to the VA, it was like seven o'clock in the morning. So it wasn't hot out yet. Once it gets scorcher hot like it is right now in the 90s, that's when this happens. Coincidence? Could be. I don't believe in coincidences, but you know, it could actually just be my fuel pump and it happens to be hot so there's no real connection other than the fact that ha this is happening where the fuel pump is failing during the summer 
It could be a bunch of different things. This thing has been acting up for some time. Probably since the whole time I owned this Jeep, I had some weird problems, fuel related at least. I mean, other than the fact my crank position sensor went on me and I had to replace it three times because I used auto uh, AutoZone parts and they just weren't any good. So I wound up having to go and get Chrysler parts for it and it liked the Chrysler parts. But occasionally I'll start this thing and it'll read that I have no fuel when I have a full tank and then the gas light will come on. So there's definitely some sort of issues going on here. Well, there's some good news and there's some bad news. The good news is he's gonna take it on. He thinks it's the pump because when you turn it on, you hear the pump pumping, but it's whining really loud. The heat, he definitely thinks, has something to do with it, just like I thought. The bad news is he's not gonna be able to do anything for a week. He's got guys out on vacation. They're slammed over at that shop. But I trust these guys at Waldwick Auto on Prospect, if you're from North Jersey. Um, they use legit OEM parts. And uh, that's it. Like I said, I don't have time with a full-time job and everything I'm going through right now as far as uh, medical issues and whatnot at the VA. I don't have time to take this thing apart and mess with it. Otherwise, if I had a spot, I'd throw it up on the lift drop that tank, clean that tank out real good, probably put a resin liner in the tank, throw in a new pump, and we'd be golden. But that's not the case. Currently don't got it like that. So we'll see, man. I thought it was bad fuel. I really didn't want to believe that a pump that wasn't that old that's in that truck. And that leads to the next thing. So, when I got this rig, I was told that the pump had been done. You can see when I was under there that the pump is new, newer, definitely not the original, definitely within a few years by how fresh she looked. But the thing is, I don't know what it is. I don't know what brand it is. And a lot of people, they just, say fix it and they don't want to pay a lot of money. For idiots like us who buy these old Jeeps and sink boatloads of cash into them, we want only the best. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace this pump and I'm gonna have peace of mind that I did the pump and then hopefully we don't have this problem anymore. And that'll be on the next episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I appreciate everyone who's liked the videos and followed. If you want to continue to see the shenanigans with my 96 ZJ, don't forget to smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. So when I drop another video, you get a notification. Once again, this is Good Guy Glenn with the spooky Jeep. Thanks for watching.